So hello everybody, first of all I'd like to thank the organizers for the opportunity to speak. I'm a basic scientist myself, but I'm very glad to have collaborated with um, a clinician, Or Kalong, in Israel, and the cell biologist, Ohan Akman, in um, New York. And I'm speaking on their behalf today on um, adult polyglucosan body disease, APPD. And this is an ultra-rare glycogen storage disease. It is caused by the um, autosom autosomal recessive mutation of the glycogen branching enzyme, leading to its enzyme deficiency. And in, in our body, we synthesize glycogen to store the uh, glucose after our meals. And this is via the concerted action of a uh, glycogen synthase enzyme that extends glucose chain um, in order for the branching enzyme to use it to make the very um, highly branched compact glycogen granular shown in, in a colored cartoon. However, in APPD patients, um, because of the branching enzyme deficiency, their glycogen is poorly branched, insoluble, and this creates, aggregates, and precipitates uh, in a form called polyglucosan bodies. And over time, polyglucosan bodies will localize and accumulate in neuronal exons particularly, and over time, they will lead to progressive neuromuscular conditions and symptoms quite um, resembling ALS, motor neuron disease. So ADPD is an adult onset disease. It's ultra rare. They are only reported less than 100 cases worldwide. And majority of these patients are of Ashkenazi Jewish origins. At the moment, currently there's no effective therapy for APPD. However, there's much work in the research and in um, understanding the disease and, and the therapy, largely due to a group of researchers or clinicians or basic scientists brought together by this wonderful uh, patient organization called the APPD Research Foundation. So the work today I'm going to present is an example of, uh, of quite a few different directions uh, within the APPD RF that are aimed at looking for new cures for APPD. So in this work, uh, we aim to try to look for small molecule compounds that can reduce polyglucosan um, accumulation, the culprit of the disease. So using cell lines that are derived from a um, uh, mouse model of the disease, a high throughput screening uh, of, of compounds, of FDA-approved compounds have been screened, identifying a compound called Briopro, an FDA-approved natural occurring compound as a candidate that can reduce the level of polyglucosan. So glycol is a naturally occurring flavorant. It is originally prescribed to suppress cough and uh, reflux, but it's also used in additive in food. So when tested in patient fibroblast cells, glycol can be shown to reduce polyglucosan formation in a dose-response manner. And then, uh, using three pieces of exper experimental data, we want, to we want to propose that glyco acts on the glycogen synthase enzyme, enzyme which is uh, the enzyme that synthesizes the glucose chain for branching enzyme to use. So firstly, glyco can inhibit the activity of uh, glycogen synthase in isolated enzymes, but also in uh, patient cell lysate. Secondly, glyco increases the hypophosphorylation of the glycogen synthase, which is a mechanism known to inactivate glycogen synthase. And thirdly, thirdly computational modeling also provides us um, a, a, a proposal that it can act on glycogen synthase directly. So with this in vitro data in hand, we next um, test the compound glyco in mice uh, using a mouse model of the disease with uh, homozygous and mutation uh, of the homozygous of the prevalent mutation, and we show that uh, glycol can reduce polyglucosan accumulation, particularly in liver, and with no severe uh, with no adverse effect. And importantly, it has also been shown to um, restore the significantly shortened lifespan of the mouse to wild type normal level. And these data allow the clinicians and the patient group to uh, think about the next step, which is to um, think about a clinical trial with Guayaco. But considering the very limited patient population here, the first plan will be an open-label um, prospective study of Guayaco in a cohort of 17 Israeli patients. And I think that's all I have. And just like to put aside to 
hard time, but also to thank uh, particularly the clinicians and the cell biologists who uh, share, who allow me to share the work, but most importantly, the Patient Foundation, who has been wonderful in this small outer rare disease to bring together 20 research, researchers and clinicians to think about strategies. Thank you.